Um, monarchs embark on an amazing migration. No other butterfly, at least in North America, I'll be humble about that, um, flies as far as a monarch butterfly does. Um, there are two subpopulations in North America. 1% of the population lives east of the, uh, west of the Rockies, and then 99% lives oh, east wow. of the Rockies. Okay. Um, so west of the Rockies, the migration is simpler. They basically head to the Southern California coast um, and tend to winter oftentimes in eucalyptus trees. They'll roost in eucalyptus trees. Um, the Eastern subpopulation has really, it, it, it's amazing. They have several different flyways they can take depending on where they're coming from um, down along the the Atlantic coast to the Gulf or through mid middle America or um, just the Great Plains. They converge, the flyways converge in Texas, kind of southern central Texas, I think. And then from there, one single flyway goes down to Mexico. In the Sierra Madres, um, there's like 12 mountaintops where they winter in fir forests there. Michoacan, I think it's, it's called. And, um, they stay there for nine months. This, found, they, this is the founding generation for next year. This is the last group of monarchs that were hatched and they do this migration. That's, that can be up to 3,000 miles if you're an Eastern monarch coming from say the Northeast. This group of butterflies, whether they're East or West, uh, lives for nine months. As they're traveling to their wintering spot, they stop and eat, but they don't breed. You know, they don't mate, they don't breed, they don't lay eggs, they don't do anything except roost and occasionally eat a little bit. But they're storing fat as they're making this 3,000 mile journey. How do you, well, I could probably do that pretty easily, but these are butterflies and they're just nectaring. Um, they get down there nine months, then come spring of the next year, they head back and they don't go too far. They mate, they breed, they lay eggs, and they die. So the next generation takes it from there. They're, they hatch, That's incredible. they fly, they mate, they breed, they lay eggs, they die. And they keep doing that up until they get to their winter, their summering grounds, wherever they came from. And any, everybody except that founding generation only lives about two to six weeks, depending on the weather. If it's good weather, they'll live a little longer. Mm. If it's bad weather, two weeks, that's it, make it count. So the females um, hatch with a, a very clear purpose to find milkweed because um, milkweed caterpillars pretty much only eat milkweed. So she lays her eggs only on milkweed. Um, so she's pretty frenetic. She can lay 300 to 500 eggs in her lifetime. Anyway, so several generations later, they get back to their summering grounds and carry on life, and then it starts all over again. But no one butterfly makes that round trip, unlike birds or whales or anything else you think that that's a major migrator. Uh, these, these butterflies are vanishing. There are reasons probably the West Coast is continuing drought, is not their friend, not the butterfly's friend, but also land development like crazy. Southern Coast. But for the, um, hmm, the the Eastern butterflies, there have been there have been there's been violence against the the um, butterfly activists. There are such things in Mexico. Um, For, for two years, they've had the butterflies have had bad weather getting down to Mexico. And the winter of 2019-20, they also had bad weather getting back. So bad weather meaning rains and winds. And you know, these are basically creatures that float down to Mexico. So, and the decision is expected in December. It may not be endangered status. It could also be threatened status. Um, and it could also be, no, I think they're doing okay. You know. You never know these days. So stay tuned, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens to the butterflies.